Hi guys, welcome to another review video and it's another portable espresso machine video and this one's called the Presso Pump and it's a bit special because there's no piston or cylinder to apply the uh, 16 bar of pressure to this one's just got a push button So let's start with um, looking at the components. So this is the main portion of the product. That's a view of the top, and that's a view of the bottom. The porter filter. That screws on the top, like that. Then you've got the water tank, and that just screws on the bottom. It comes with a cup, in fact, it comes with two cups. There's like one cup there, and there's a cup inside it. I don't really see the need for two cups, um, unless they were giving you two um, coffee baskets. If you had two of those, then yeah, two cups would make sense, but with only one basket, you wouldn't really have the need for two cups. But there they are, don't have to use them. If I'm at home, I pour my espressos into a glass. Always have. When you're prepping the cup, you'll obviously retain more heat in a glass than you would in a bit of plastic. But if you was out camping, you take these with you. Clips on the top, so why wouldn't you? Get a scoop. A USB cable. It's just a regular USB on one end, and then the other end is not. See? So you don't want to be losing this cable because you'll be stuffed without it. Also in the box you get a warranty card and there's a user manual there as well. There's a guide on there that shows you what to do. And you get like a power adapter. This is for an American plug supply, but um, I haven't even been using this. First, I started off using my Monster power bank. This is 25,000 milliamp hours. So it's got a digital display on it, see? So I was thinking, if I use this, I can see how quickly that digital display goes down and then I can see how much juice it's gonna take. But you know, I made about 20 coffees and it went down by about 2%, which is nothing. If that was accurate, it would mean that that presso pump would make 500 coffees before I'd need to recharge this so I can't believe that's right so what I did was I switched to this and this is my smallest portable charger uh, by a company called Frunai I won't waffle on about it but basically it comes with a 3400 milliamp hour battery you know like if you're a prisoner and you scratch a line down get four and then you put a cross for it. I'll be doing that to see how many coffees I'm gonna get out of it and I can't believe how efficient it is power wise. I think I could take that for a week probably and get two or three coffees a day the way it's going. So I really am extremely impressed with how efficient the pump is off a regular tiny little portable power bank. Right guys, I think it's time we make our first coffee. Now before I do, I just gotta show you something quickly. I treated myself to this. Some coffee from uh, Square Mile in London. I was researching, I think on Reddit, and uh, this guy posted a link to all the local roasters that he recommends. And I picked one, it's called Red Brick Seasonal Espresso. But check this, see the um, roasted date? That was basically Monday. And today's only Wednesday, so it's only two days. And um, as much as I want to use this today, I can't because it's just too fresh. Um, they recommend waiting seven days, um, but I'm probably going to wait three or four days. Um, otherwise, it hasn't had a chance to degas, and you'll get quite a light taste. The crema won't be that good either, so much as I want to fire it up with this guys sorry now all 
portable espresso machines need to go through some sort of preheating phase. If you don't, you're gonna have an averagely warm espresso. The preheating on this is brilliant because you can just press the button and basically pump hot water through the whole system so it's nice and warm when you um, actually put your coffee basket in there. Right guys, so I'm just gonna warm this glass up and then I'm gonna fill this up to the max level like that. Okay, so now just screw this top on and you wanna make sure that there's a fair bit of tension there. Now just take this basket and I'll put that in there, that way I can heat that basket up as well. And then I just press this button. It takes a few seconds to reach pressure and then just see there you've got a nice consistent flow and that stays pretty much the same even once the basket's loaded up with uh, coffee grinds so there you go I think 8 grams is what they recommend now I have actually managed to get 10 grams in there so it is possible if you did want to push the boundaries a little bit okay so to get it into the basket all I'm doing is just flipping this over, tapping it a bit, and there you go. I actually put a little bit more um, coffee in than that. I'm gonna actually gonna just put an extra little amount in, because I know I can. So there you go guys, that's my basket loaded up, and you can see I've got maybe about three and a half to four mil of depth there before the grinds and uh, that works out really nicely when it comes to cleaning out the puck that just sits on top like that and then you just screw on the porter filter the way down now what we need to do is re-add some fresh water to the tank at the bottom Screw it back on. And we're ready to go. Now one thing I've noticed with this, try and keep the um, porter filter nice and low down in the cup. That way it's gonna do two things. Firstly, it's gonna not trap too much air on the way down, which makes bubbles. And secondly, it's gonna keep the temperature as high as possible. Okay, so I didn't actually count that, but that was probably around about 20 seconds. Okay, so there you've got a nice creme. There was a consistent speed on the extraction. Now I could have put that on the scales and I could have just measured that water as, as it was coming out to get that good ratio. Um, it would have been just under 30 grams. That's probably a bit more, but I don't mind to be honest, I'm not that fussy. So guys, when you're using a portable espresso machine, there's always a few variables that you've got to take into consideration. It's a lot to do with preparation, uh, the coarseness of the grinds and stuff. I spoke about this in my previous video. But more than that, you've got to consider the temperature. So the pre-warming phase is essential if you want to try and achieve a good temperature. This is actually really good. Um, one of the best, in fact. The whole process of doing a complete um, extraction with boiling water really gives it a chance to heat all the elements up. For any of you that have used the hand presso or you might own a hand presso, you're pumping the 16 bar of pressure into the chamber before you press that release button. So what's happening is, if you watch the gauge, it's just falling during the extraction. So it starts at 16, it probably ends up probably less than five in some cases. So the, the last part of your extraction is not gonna be as good as the first part. If you imagine a, a line graph, you would have 16 bar and then it would be progressively falling down. The other variety, the piston type, uh, the Star Esso, the Nano Presso, the Mini Presso, and I'm sure there's a few others. What you're doing there is you've got like a seesaw pressure effect. So as you're pumping, there'll be an initial burst of pressure and then it will drop a bit. So it's more like that rather than 
like that. Now with this presso pump, you've got the steady increase of pressure and then once it reaches the 16 bar and it's been tested to produce 16 bar, the porter filter valve opens and then you get a consistent pressure throughout the whole extraction. Now that's something that the others don't do. So that demonstration I just did was using these beans. The packet's been open for probably two weeks now, so they've had their best day. But the coffee was still pretty decent, really. So no complaints at all. When I get a chance to use my red brick, that's when we'll know. Okay guys, I'm just going to quickly show you the cleaning phase. Uh, I'd say there's two types of cleaning on this. There's the quick rinse, and then there's a more thorough clean. I might as well show you both, eh? So firstly, you've got to take that bottom off, because that's probably still going to have a bit of water left in there if you haven't extracted that full amount. But that is basically boiled water, and it's as clean as anything. Now, you've got the top portion. So there you go, porter filter. So you've got a few coffee grinds on the actual surface of that porter filter that you need to rinse off. And then there's the basket. Now what I really like about this basket and getting it clean, where well you've got that small amount of depth, you can tap it on a surface like that until the puck is flush with the top and then that's ready to just force out into the bin. I'll show you in the sink and um, just so you can see, but I would just usually go like that, straight into the bin, and look. And that's a nice decent puck that's come out of there. And I didn't really tamper that too hard either. I mean, that just needs a quick rinse under the tap. Same as this. And then that surface there too, although there's no grinds in that, that's just water there. So this is just your basic clean out. Okay, but now every say three or four, you can actually do a slightly deeper clean. And to do that, you can either use this portion of the um, scoop that it comes with, or just grab a spoon. What you can do is just push that into this gap here and pop that out. I mean, there's not really anything on it but um, then you can just give that a rinse. Push it back in. And then the same on this component. Just get something in there and pop it out. But like I say, there's very little in the way of grinds beyond the actual basket to worry about. All you've got to just be careful of is when you um, push this one back in, you just got to line up those pins. There we go. And that's it. I did write some notes down here, guys. I'm trying to be a bit more professional, you know? So what do I like about this product? Power consumption is fantastic. Um, the basket is great for bashing out the puck. That works really well. And the cleaning phase, no problems at all there. A little rinse. Like I say, everything really gets contained between the porter filter and the basket. So there's not grinds everywhere. It just basically needs a little rinse under the tap and it's done. The consistency of that flow, I mean, you, I didn't do it then, but I've been counting it, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, and been aiming, I've been aiming for around about 20 seconds on an extraction, and it does work really well. Um, even when I fiddle around with the coarseness of the grinds, which I've been doing, I've took the basket from eight grams to 10 grams, I've gone from a coarse to a very fine espresso grind and it still managed to push it out and I, I was very surprised I didn't expect it to it was a little bit slower but I took the same grind and I stuck it in the star so I couldn't push that piston down at all so it, it that pump works really really well so like I say you can control the coarseness of the grind to slow and speed up that extraction to fine-tune it what you can't really fine-tune is the temperature 
all you can do is do your best job, do a pre-warm phase and then get your basket in as quickly as possible. Keep that quarter fill to nozzle as low down as you can to the cup. If you're using the um, cup included, you can basically almost touch it on the surface. But the further away you are, the longer the distance that flow has to go and it's gonna cool down in the air and you're gonna get bubbles in it. So I found that keeping it really close gives you a lovely crema. So that's another little tip for you and it does help with the heat as well, it keeps it hotter. So overall I've had a very good experience with this product. The build quality can be refined a bit more. Um, I don't see a reason to have two cups in it. Just give me one decent cup like the uh, Nano Presso. Also, when you screw that bottom water tank on, there is no line that represents the tension on that. So if you, if you just screwed it up fairly loose and then flipped it over, you can get some water coming out this edge here. So you need to give that a bit of a turn, not too much, um, but just enough to really make that water tight. Now it would make sense to me, like on the hand presso, to have a white line that represents the correct tension. So when you do tighten that up, you bring it to the line and you know you're good. That's something that they could do. Secondly, you need to sort that out really. That's just gonna get lost in my opinion. It hasn't so far because I'm mindful of it, but I mean, that could easily get lost. Okay guys, I think I've waffled on long enough, don't you? I'll just tell you the price quickly. Here it is on the uh, website. $79.99, that is. And I think that's pretty reasonable considering the cost of a hand presso or the nano presso. I think that's quite a decent price. Um, time will tell about the durability of the pump. Um, I'm gonna keep using it. Um, so if obviously if the pump fails, I'll be sure to let you guys know in the comments um, I'll, or I'll do an update to this video. But as of now, I reckon I've made 40 coffee so far and uh, there's, the pump's been consistent every time. Considering I put a very fine grind in there uh, and used 10 grams and it did still manage to extract, goes to show that that pump's pretty damn decent. Uh, I'm just amazed that it works off a tiny power bank. I, I love my coffee, I have for years. I'm a bit of a master on this AeroPress, as well as my other uh, espresso makers. But when you see this on packets, hazelnut, marmalade and chocolate. Now I can definitely taste the bitterness and the sweetness of a coffee but I can't really say oh I can taste flavors of marmalade let me know in the comments below if you're able to distinguish those flavors maybe I don't have a sophisticated palate I was actually thinking about maybe taking a course in like coffee tasting and see if I could develop it more I do know a good one from a bad one and I know if I've extracted well or not and um, so I just don't get that detail of flavor like some people um, claim to get I don't know I think a lot of its interpretation it's the same with red wine when you read the bottle of red wine and it says uh, tobacco flavors I don't think I've ever drank a red wine that's tasted a fags to be honest <laughs> anyway this is turning into a massive waffle now guys um, on my last video I said I was nearly on 500 subscribers now I think I'm on like 530, so thank you to all the new subscribers. If you're still here and you've listened to all this waffle and you're still listening, then double thank you. Also, I was gonna do a 500 subscriber giveaway, but then I thought, mm, I'd rather tuck in the giveaway within the, within a video. So for the, all those people that truly do enjoy my videos that have got to the end, you're in for a treat. Because what I think I'm gonna do, yeah, might as well. Basically, if you'd like to, I'm gonna give, hmm, I'll give a $40 Amazon gift card away or 30 pounds if you're in England. And all you've gotta do, I haven't thought this through at all, I don't know what you gotta do, let me think. 
I thought of something. If you've got any comments, leave them below. But if you've got this far and you want that gift voucher, all you've got to do is at the end of your sentence, just put good stuff. Good stuff. I put nice one. So end your sentence with nice one. You might be the only person that does, in which case you're definitely going to win. Because um, I think most people would have, would have left by now. Um, so if, you're, if you've got this far, just leave nice one at the end of your comment. And if it's only you, you win. And, and if there's others, what I'll do is uh, I'll pick it out randomly. So I should imagine you'll have like a one in five chance, maybe even better, who knows. Um, I think that's the fairest way. So everyone else that hasn't got this far, it's, it's their own fault for not listening to my waffle to the very end. Anyway guys, I'm gonna round this video up now. Thanks very much for watching and uh, hopefully I'll have some more coffee related um, videos coming soon. And there's other videos you can check out as well. And if you wanna see my other reviews of the Hampresso, Staresso, Nanopresso, um, Hampresso Auto, you'll probably find them in, in in my other related videos or wherever. Just go looking for them. Um, and that's it basically. Thanks very much. There's my train. <laughs>